Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Catherine Shelton and welcome to the 365 Project. So the big question, what is the 365 Project? Well, I would like to challenge you to create a book, publish it using Create Space and get it online and selling on Amazon.com by Christmas. Whoa, that sounds massive. That sounds like a big project. I'm going to show you in very few stages how easy this actually is. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll not be just making one book, but you'll make several, maybe more, maybe loads of books to put on Amazon and get those selling for Christmas. So the first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to look at Create Space and go over what Create Space is and how to use that. The second thing we're going to do is talk all about 365 projects, what they are, why they're super popular, why this is going to be a big thing for Christmas and how it factors into your book. After that, we're going to go through the process of creating your book, publishing it, uploading it to Create Space and getting it on sale. And then finally, at the end of this class, we're going to talk about how to market your book. So we're going to work through this in logical steps. And first of all, we're going to take a look at Create Space. So let's start off by taking a look at Create Space and learning why it is awesome. So here we are. This is what you will see if you go to createspace.com. And Create Space is an Amazon company. So the books you create can appear on Amazon, you will probably want to sell them on Amazon, but it's also a standalone platform in its own right. You can actually sell books just on CreateSpace. I'm not sure why you would want to when you have all of Amazon.com available to you, but it is an option. And you can do some pretty amazing things with CreateSpace. So really, it gives you three things you can publish. You can create books, you can create CDs, and you can create DVDs. We're just going to focus on books for now. Guys, the books you can make with Create Space look fantastic. The first thing I will say is they are all paperbacks. If you're wanting to make spiral bound books or hardcover books, then you might need to look at something like lulu.com or another self publisher. With Create Space, you just make trade paperbacks but they look great. Let's take a look at a few that some of my students have created. This is the new Sasha O'Hara book. Awesome lady. She made these beautiful coloring books and has done stupendously well with them. She's had the number one adult coloring book. She's been in the top 10 of books on Amazon, like all of books. She has done incredibly well. And this is one of her books published with Create Space. And you can see the quality is really nice. This is the glossy cover, looks fantastic. Jordan Colton, another of our Curate members, students, he published this book all about Night of the Living Dead. And I know some of you are going, oh no, copyright. Night of the Living Dead actually ended up in the public domain and Jordan took advantage of that and made this really fabulous coloring book that tells the story of the movie. And really, really cool is that he got featured by MST3K for their reunion with his horrible colouring books. And he launched a whole brand of colouring books just from this one, all create space. And what he's actually done is used the matte cover and it looks really, really good. Usually I'm a little hesitant on the matte cover. They do tend to pick up fingerprints on the black parts, but because of the way he's used colour, this looks awesome. It doesn't really have that fingerprinty thing. It just feels like a cool book. Here's a composition book. I think Nina in our group created this composition book and she hand painted the owl. Absolutely beautiful. She used the template we have in our curate course to create the interior. So actually we, we have a system where you can just add a cover and the interior is all done for you. So beautiful, beautiful book there by Nina. Here's one of the journals we made personally. It's called the Mansplain Journal, and it's just full of these pictures of men explaining stuff <laughs> from using old classical pieces of art with captions, all public domain art. So that's another way to use it. We've also done a lot of things like just 
This book is actually graph paper. It's isometric graph paper that you can use if you're doing 3D printing. And this book's done really well for us. We have some other grid paper and graph paper books as well. All of these books are put together with Create Space. They look great. They're very high quality. We've had a lot of people make coloring books as well with Create Space. They've done really well with their coloring books. What I will say about the paper quality, they will easily, easily handle simple writing with biro pens, with pencil crayons. They struggle a little bit with Sharpie. Sharpie does tend to leak through, but most regular writing, no problem at all. Just like most other composition books, in fact, or other notebooks. So let's talk about 365 projects. What you are going to be doing as a book publisher is you are going to create a book that will facilitate someone's 365 project. And there are many, many possible projects that you could do. So there's plenty for everyone here. Now, a 365 project, all it is is a big task broken down into 365 smaller tasks. And these have become very popular on the internet with people blogging about their 365 projects. A lot of people maybe post one Instagram picture per day for 365 days all around a certain theme. Some people want to improve their health or get exercise and log their daily exercise or they want to eat five fruit and vegetables every day and so they can log that. What you are doing is creating a framework for people. So you're going to do a small amount of the work. So for example, you might put together 365 writing prompts or drawing prompts. You're not going to do the writing or the drawing. You're just going to come up with 365 prompts. Your reader is going to do the bulk of the work. And this is really important to bear in mind because it's really easy to get caught up in like, oh, maybe I should write 365 essays or maybe I should draw 306. No, don't do that. Let, let your reader do that. You are just going to come up with a framework for them to put their work in. So your task is really just to create a framework to help someone else accomplish their task. The simplest 365 project is probably just a diary or a journal with 365 spaces for people to write about their day. You could also do some kind of log. If people enjoy sort of wine tasting or chocolate tasting, you could create a log for them to write about what kind of wine they tasted each day. Similarly, you could do an exercise log or a diet log or did I eat my five apples a day log? Like you could just simply do the apple log and that would be a project. We want to be a little bit more interesting than that though. So let's talk about some topics that would be good for a 365 project. Well, the first thing I would ask is what problems do people have that you could help solve? So we know exercise, diet, health are all big ones. So if you create a book around any of those topics, that could be super successful. Another big issue is Relationships. People have relationships with their husband, their wife, their children, their friends. They might be looking for a relationship. How would you turn that into a book? Well, you could do a bedtime story book where like perhaps you challenge your reader to read a bedtime story to their child every night and they can log which story they read each night. Or you could suggest stories. So again, keep in mind this concept that you do a little bit of the work and your reader does the majority of the work. You can suggest the bedtime story, the reader will go and find the bedtime story and read it and write about it. So you're doing a little bit of the work, your reader does most of the work. You could also do writing, art, drawing, making, crafting prompts. So pick a theme and you would do something like design one art project about fairies each day. It could be as simple as draw a fairy every day and just have a drawing prompt with different kinds of fairies. It could be a writing prompt book. Now there's actually a lot of those around at the moment. I strongly suggest going to a bookstore, especially a big bookstore like Barnes & Noble, just to browse around and get a feel for what's popular. But there are a lot of writing prompt books and writing prompts can be anything. They can be a time where you felt afraid or a time you were happy 
Or it could be something more abstract, like the moon, and that's your writing prompt. It really depends on the vibe you're going for. I think what would be really cool is doing themed writing prompts. So for example, you could maybe do sci-fi writing prompts, like trouble on the bridge, or Martians at dawn, or you can come up with something. So prompts for creative projects are really good. You could also do sewing projects or scrapbooking projects. For example, create a scrapbook page a day or create a sewing picture a day or like you can see I'm very good at sewing I, I know all the terminology it's definitely a sewing picture but you can give people these tasks to do every day it could be maybe challenging someone to meditate each day or pray each day you could curate 365 things so you could curate affirmations affirmations are really when you look in the mirror and say I am a good person I am beautiful I am loved you could just scribble down 365 of those and put those out there and have an affirmation journal like there are so many different things you can do so let's take a look at how we can research a few more ideas before we decide on our project so one of the first places I start when I'm researching anything especially if I'm selling something on Amazon is Amazon and one of the easiest things we can do to see what is popular is just go to books and type in 365 you can see there are a lot of 365 books out there but what's great to see is that a lot of them are very popular so there's 365 days of wonder and this is a quote every day of the year about courage friendship love and kindness so that's 365 quotes and you could in fact curate 365 public domain quotes if those quotes were recorded before 1923 you can probably use them in a book this one's a bestseller here this is 365 Tao daily meditations you can see it's a super popular book it was actually published in 1992 it's a bestseller and has 297 reviews so doing amazingly well 365 manners kids should know daily devotions by teen girls what i love about this one is that this very much sets an audience this is devotions by teen girls for teen girls wow they put the keywords and the audience right there in the title and obviously doing well with it 110 reviews there and so on we can you can keep going through these this time next year 365 days of exploration you also get into learning things i love this walking the red road spiritual life you can really encourage people to learn something maybe a foreign language or an instrument and as they learn they can write down what they've learned in their book that you've created for them you could even do something like a vocabulary word of the day and then all you would need to find is 365 long words and give them a long word each day i bet you could google a list of long words actually and you could probably find a lot there you can if you did a foreign language you could give people a foreign word each day that they have to find the meaning of, learn it, and maybe write down a sentence using that word. Like, there are a lot of ways of creating this framework for your customers. What I will say though, don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into that trap of doing it all yourself. Just create prompts or small curated amounts of information. Otherwise, you're going to be here long after Christmas. We are not trying to write a best selling novel. We are creating a best selling, hopefully, journal, planner, diary, or other kind of framework for someone to do their 365 project. So you can browse through Amazon at your own leisure and check out the 365 projects there. Now, I also like to use Tangent for my research. This is our new software system, and I find it super helpful when I'm really in the planning stages of any project. And a great place to start is actually the Tangent words. And what I've done, if you don't have Tangent, I've actually put together a big long list of these keywords for you. I think there's about 800, 900 items on the list. And what I did, I just searched for things like 365 things. You could also do 365 ideas, 365 quotes. And what Tangent Words tells you, it gives you keyword suggestions, 
These are popular searches across a variety of online marketplaces and search engines. So this is really giving you the kind of things people are looking for on different search engines and on marketplaces like Amazon. So this is a great sort of beginning if you're really stuck on what to do. This gives you popular books like 365 Things I Love About You, 365 Things to Make and Do. Now these searches may not necessarily be books, like these may be things people are typing into Google, like 365 Nice Things to Say. That would make an amazing book and in fact, Let's take a look and see if this is actually a book on Amazon. So we can actually click through using Tangent. It's not 365 nice things to say. So I think we may have actually found a topic that would be really good for a 365 project. So Tangent has actually just helped us find a great idea there, which is 365 nice things to say. So if I was going to take this 365 nice things to say and turn this into a book, what I would probably do is pick two nice things per page and do it over 180 pages. And on each page, I would do something like I would list my nice things to say. So something like I love how you do your hair. That would be one. And then what I would do is leave a space for my reader to write down the reaction of the person they said it to. Ah, and you could maybe put a checkbox there as well. So you could be like, okay, 365 nice things to say. This is the nice thing you're going to say and you log the reaction to it. And I would put two of those per page and that's my book, 365 nice things to say. So I've just literally come up with this. This wasn't pre-planned. I came up with that idea on the spur of the moment, just using these keyword suggestions from Tangent and then clicking through to Amazon and saying, okay, there's no books about that there. And you can go on with all of this sort of like 365 things you love about him, 365 things you love about your best friend. That would make a great gift book. 365 crazy things to do. Like that actually sounds fun to brainstorm that. I would come up with 365 crazy things to do. And so that's how I researched my 365 ideas using tangent keywords. So another approach with your 365 project is just to come up with a popular theme and find a way to turn that into 365 things. So for example, you could do 365 jokes about unicorns or 365 owls to color or 365 bacon challenges like recipes you can make with bacon. Can you eat bacon every day? Like. It's not good for you, but people would buy that book. Now, another idea I had, robots have been really good for me, especially at around Valentine's Day. I've done kids' Valentine cards with robots. I've done wrapping paper with robots, with Santa beards at Christmas. I really like doing robot themed things. So I had the idea to do a robot drawing design book. So basically what we will do in our book is we will give people prompts each day for a robot to design and draw and each robot will have a particular theme or task. So my first step with this was to brainstorm robots. So I'm going to use Google Sheets to do this just because it's free, it's easy to use. So it, you can use Excel or numbers, whatever you want. And I'm just going to start a blank spreadsheet here and I'm going to come up with 365 robot ideas. So it's really straightforward. I mean, you can come up with anything. You can do sort of dishwasher robot. It's kind of boring. What about birthday bot, party bot, disco robot? That's kind of the same thing. So maybe we'll move that a bit further down. What else can we come up with? Robot unicorn. Like you can put, put all of these things in here, robot eating a bacon sandwich. And you can go on with this forever. Now you might say, how am I gonna come up with 365 ideas? Well, I did it last night. I sat in bed, I think it took me about an hour last night and then maybe I spent another maybe half hour on it this morning, probably no more than an, an hour and a half in total. And I came up with 365 robots, but I cheated a little bit. One thing I did, I used tangent words again. So I just searched for robot and that gave me a bunch of popular searches straight off the bat. Things like 
I like robot Roomba. A robot and monster. Robot, there's robot unicorn attack. Robot window cleaner. That's a great one. So a lot of these I could just put straight into my spreadsheet. And you'll see here, this is the spreadsheet I came up with. So we had like hip hop, you don't stop robot. Robot octopus. Flower power robot. Robot from the dark side. So you can imagine these prompts. People are going to come up with really fun ideas for these, to draw these robots. Ickle baby bot. Robot, there's the robot with the bacon sandwich. I knew I'd had that idea. And I did some popular culture people, like Usain bot. Huh? See, like Usain bot. Yeah, you get it. Kurt Co bot. And so on. Broadway bot. Robot judgy pants. So I got some of these by using the keyword suggestions from Tangent, which actually comes up with, wow, 670 keywords for robot. So another thing I did, I used the niche machine in Tangent. So one thing you can do is, uh, I went, I think I went to Halloween and I did Halloween party themes. And I thought some of these would be really fun. So I did like robot in Wonderland and vampire robot. And I mean, all I'm using here, so the niche machine lists 15,000 different niches, but it organizes them all into subcategories. And it gives you how popular the search is. It gives you some search volumes from Google there. And what is cool is that I used Halloween, Halloween party themes. And from here, I mean, this generates a whole bunch more ideas for me. So, I mean, you can have alien robot, pirate robot, zombie robot, and so on. Goth bot, um, ninja bot. Like, it, it gave me a bunch of ideas. So, as I say, I put together this spreadsheet, 365 Amelia Earbot, these are great. 365 different robots, Romeo and Julie bot, Bling bot, Little Bot of Horrors. I put these together in about an hour and a half. So you can come up with 365 prompts in an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer. Also use Wikipedia for your ideas. Look on public domain pages. If you're doing art, you could probably find 365 little pictures, little images you could use. There's a lot of ways of doing this, but that is how I did my research to come up with 365 robot prompts. So now let's go to Canva and see how we turn this into a book. Okay, so we are ready to start creating our robot book. So let's go to create space and we're gonna hit create a book right here. Okay, so the first thing it wants is the name of our project. And we can change this at any time, but I'm gonna call it 365 robots, a bot every day. It's not a very original title, but it will do for now. And we already know we want to make a paperback book and we're going to say guided. So guided just makes it a little bit easier for you to follow through the steps. The expert view just brings it all down to one page. So when you get good, go with the expert view because it's quicker. But for now, we're gonna go with the guided walkthrough of Create Space. So the first thing we see is title information. And here's where Create Space is great. It really explains everything as you go. So it says, okay, here's what to do on this page. Title information, we don't need a subtitle. And I'm gonna put myself as the author. You can use a pen name, it's absolutely fine to use a pen name or to use a brand name there as well. So sometimes I'll do that, I'll actually put my brand name, sometimes I use a pen name. So it's absolutely fine. Just remember that if you want to set up author pages on Amazon, you are limited on how, I think you can have three author pages. So you are limited on how many author pages you can have but you can actually set up as many pen names as you like. You just can't have an author page for all of them. So that's cool. We've got our author title. It's not part of a series, so we can happily ignore that. And it's in English and we'll set the publication date to August the 11th, which is today when I'm recording this. And that's done, we're gonna save and continue. So you can see this is already a quick process. We've got the, the title, the basic information set up. Now we need to choose an ISBN number. So the ISBN number is an international standard book number. And all it is is an identifier that you need to publish and distribute your book. So it's kind of like a UPC for books. 
So I'm just going to say assign my free create space ISBN because hey, it's free and we can get a book up very, very quickly. There really isn't any problem with using create space ISBN number. Your book can still be sold everywhere that create space will distribute it to, even including the expanded distribution. The only thing to be aware of is if at a later date you're very serious about your book, you get another publisher to put it out there, they may want to use their own ISBN number, but this really shouldn't cause you any issues. So we're just going to go ahead and say assign free ISBN and create space gives you your both the 13 digit version and the 10 digit version of your ISBN number and you are done. Awesome. Okay, so this is where we have to make a few more decisions. We move on to the interior of our book. So here we go. It gives you a couple of options, black and white or full color. Now I would avoid full color unless you are like, you have a really burning need to make your book color. The reason I say this is full color is expensive. Black and white is much more cost efficient and means you're going to get more profit on each of your book. Full color will generally eat up most of the profits of your book. But if you are doing an art book, a coffee table book, and color is very important to the project, then go ahead, use full color. It is your option to do that. Now, the second thing we have to decide is the size of our book. So a six by nine book is probably a small paperback book. I'm going to go, because this is an activity book and I want to aim it at kids, I'm going to go with letter size, which is 8.5 by 11 inches. This book that we put together, the grid paper, the isometric grid paper, this is an 8.5 by 11 inch book. So it might be a bit big for some of your projects. For things like coloring books, puzzle books, it's a great size. So we're going to make our book big. Now Create Space is super nice because they give you templates that you can use if you want to put your your content already formatted into a template you can use these i tend to not bother with templates just because i i do the work myself in canva and i'm going to show you how to do that but you can absolutely make your book in pages in word in google docs you can use any word processor as long as you can put together a pdf file you can absolutely go ahead and make your book in any word processor you want. For this project though, I'm going to be using Canva. Okay, so we've chosen our interior type, we've chosen our size, and we're going to stick with white paper, although I'm sure cream is very attractive. We're going to now say upload our book file. So Create Space will accept a PDF, doc, docx, or an RTF file. I recommend a PDF but they will actually do the conversion for you. So if you upload a doc or an RTF file, they will actually convert it to a PDF for you, but you can upload any of those. So we have to go ahead now and make our interior file. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Canva where we're gonna start designing the interior for our robot book. So what I'm gonna do is say create a design and I'm going to pick custom dimensions. Now there is a US letter template here, but I don't want to use that. What I actually want to do is say custom dimensions and I'm going to change this units measurement to inches. And what I'm going to do, because we are making an 8.5 by 11 inch book, I'm actually going to add on a little bit to each of those dimensions. And the reason I'm doing that is because Create Space actually centers your page in the book. And what it can do is if it's not big enough, it can either leave a little bit of space around the outside or it can get chopped off around the outside. So I'm actually going to set this up at 8.7 5 by 11.25. If you want a document that's 8.5 by 11, we're just adding on that extra quarter of an inch just to give us a little bit more space to work with in Create Space. So I recommend you do this for any size of book that you are doing. Just add that extra quarter of an inch on for both dimensions. And then we're going to hit Design. Okay, so what we are looking at now is the first page of our book. So we want to do something with robots. So I'm just going to search actually for robot and see what comes up. And I'm going to look for illustrations because I don't want photographs. 
Now, one thing I want to tell you about Canva is that there are two different types of elements in Canva. There are paid ones here. This says this is a dollar if you use this picture. So you can see if I use this in my document, that's going to cost me a dollar. And actually, it's going to cost me a lot more than that because it is not licensed for commercial use in products. However, if I use the free elements like this one here, the, the free elements actually come with the extended license from Canva already built in which is amazing. It means that you can use these commercially. I've emailed Canva, I've talked to them myself, and they've confirmed that it's fine to use the free elements commercially. So just make sure any elements you use from Canva are free. You can also upload your own artwork as well, or you can upload public domain artwork, but just don't go stealing anything randomly off the internet. It has to either, you have the rights to it, or it has to be public domain or use Canva's free elements. So I don't really like that robot. What I'm gonna do is just quickly browse through these and I see some pretty fun robots here. I like this guy. This is pretty cool. So I'm gonna put this as a little motif uh, down here, I think. And I'm gonna put the first of my robot prompts in here. So I've got my first little robot motif in here and I'm just gonna bring him away from the edge. One thing I will say with this, it, you should leave about 36 pixels of space from the edge. So this one's okay. If you can see if I drag this around, you can see those numbers there. I'm going to bring him to about 44. There we go. So there's enough space around here that he won't get chopped off by either the center of the book or the outside edge. So it's good to stay away from the edges, especially if it's important. Now, if you're doing line pages, you want to go straight up to the end and, and that's going to bleed over. But for something like this, you don't want it to get chopped off. So leave that little bit of space. Now I can start putting in the prompts. So I'm going to put a bit of text in here. You can go through these text uh, samples and choose something cool from here, or you can just put in your own text. So I'm just going to grab a subheading there and I'm going to use my first prompt, which is birthday robot. Cool. So I can go back to my design and I'm just delete that and put birthday robot. So I need to change this font, something that looks kind of robot. Ah, in fact, I have Roboto right there. So birthday robot, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to keep it all black and white because we know that black and white is a lot cheaper to print. So there is some color on this, but create space will convert it to black and white. So I don't need to worry about that. So we've got birthday robot and we can put some lines in here and just go to lines. And the great thing with this is there are all different styles of lines. So you can really experiment with this. So if you want to like put some information about the robot, if you want your, your reader to put some information about the robot, you can give them some lines to write on like that. Or we can maybe put it here. If we don't want them to write anything, we can give them a frame to draw in. So I might put these down here, do, do, do. there we go. So someone can like put some information about their robot there and we can give them a frame. So I'm going to go to shapes and pick out, let's see, what would be a good frame to draw your robot in? Let's see, I kind of like this. Is that weird? That's a little bit weird. Let's not use that. We could you just put that there. So that's where you would draw your birthday robot. So perfect. We already have the first, it's a little ugly looking, there we go. I don't. I think it's these lines are kind of off. They don't really look like robot lines. So I'm gonna go and change those quickly there. And I'm gonna change these lines so they look a little less weird. Let's go to lines. What do we like that's better? Actually, I like this one. This kind of looks like a computery line. So let's delete those two here. Instead, we're going to put these computery lines. I'm sure there's a technical term for them, but for now, I'm calling them computery lines. We can put that there and we can copy it and copy it again. And then we'll just line them up there. 
So you can see you have the alignment here. So it does sort of try and help you align them. I think that's even. I can go back over it later. But great, we've already got the first page of our book. And in fact, I'm going to make these black and white. Okay, so we've turned those to black. Awesome. So I think this is going to look kind of cute. Maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger. In fact, I think what we're going to do is make it like that. Perfect. Now, now it's starting to look a bit more even. I like that. Awesome. So you can fiddle with this until you come up with the perfect design for your book. I'm going to bring that in just a little bit there. And I think that will do for the first page. So let's go and add a new page. And what I'm going to do, because I don't want to keep having to do the same thing, I'm just going to copy this over, pull that down, stick it on this page here. And I'm going to do the same with these. I'm going to copy those and drag the whole thing down to the next page. Perfect. So now I just got to come up with another heading. So instead of birthday robot, this time we're going to do, let's have a look. I'm going to choose one here, fancy pants robot. I love it. Let's go and put fancy pants robot down here. So let's drop that there, change that to fancy pants. And now we want another picture. So I'm going to just change this up a little bit and I'm going to put a robot down in this corner. So let's see what we've got here. This guy's good. I like this guy. I'm going to put him in there. So another free element, mostly black and white. It's going to, we, we can see that's going to look good in black and white. Make him a little bit smaller and put him in there. Okay, so we've already put together two pages for our book and we can just go on doing this. Now the great thing with Canva is you can create a PDF document of up to 30 pages. So we can keep going, add a new page, add a new page up to 30 pages. Now, if you're doing 300 pages in your book, that's gonna mean you've gotta to put together 10 documents each with 30 pages. Now, what you need to know about Canva is that you can download as a PDF from Canva. So what you will do is download PDF to print from Canva. Now, there's one bummer with Canva at the moment is that if you go past 30 pages, they make you stop and start a new document. Now, that's not a big deal. It just means that you will have to merge them all together. And what they do is they actually recommend a product called Small PDF that is free uh, and lets you stick multiple PDF files together. So that's what we'll do with this robot PDF. To speed up the process even more, you can actually also just hit copy on your page and that will make a duplicate version of that page. And all you have to do then is just make small changes to whatever it is you want to change. So we can put a different robot in there, right like that. Bring him away from the edges, make him a little bit smaller. So we can bring in another robot and we can just change that top bit to robot dreams. So look, we, we can start making these pages very, very quickly. So if you want to make 365 pages for your book, it won't take you that long. And of course you can do two prompts per page and bring it down to 180 pages. So there's different ways of doing this. Okay, so when I've created my first document, what I'm gonna do is first of all, make a copy of it. So I'm gonna go make a copy. That will make a second version of my document. And then I'm gonna go back to the original, which is right here, and I'm gonna download it as a PDF. So I'm just gonna to go to PDF print, make sure you select PDF print, and I'm gonna download that PDF from there. Great, okay, so we've downloaded our first PDF. Now I'm gonna to go to my copy and I'm gonna start a new one here. So I'm gonna do Marilyn Mon Bot. There we go. We can change these pictures around. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna reuse these same pictures across different pages. I, I think that's okay. I'm just gonna change the names of these. Um, so we can have ballroom bots and people can draw their whatever they think of here write some information about it They can do all of that and so what I'm doing is I'm just going to make a second PDF file by going through and changing the information Okay, so now I have a second document. So I have two documents 
each with 30 pages all about robots and I'm going to download this one too as a second PDF. So here it goes. Okay, so we now have our two documents. We have two documents, each with 30 pages. What I'm gonna do is go to this tool, which is called smallpdf.com. And they have a tool called Merge PDF. And it's super, super easy to use. So what I'm gonna do is drag in my first picture here. Just drag and drop it in. That's the one that starts with Robot Dreams. And then I'm gonna drag and drop in my second one, which is has Marilyn Monbot. And I'm just gonna click Merge PDF. What that actually does is just create a new file called Merged PDF. And we can open that up, and merge the two documents together and turn it into one document. Perfect. So you're gonna do this with all of your Canva documents. So if you are doing a 52 project, that's nice and easy. You're only gonna need 52 pages. If you're doing a 365 project, you might want to put multiple prompts on a page just so you don't have to make 12 of these documents. But if you are, that's cool. If you don't mind putting 365 pages in your book, that's totally cool. All it means is that you're gonna have 12 different documents, each with about 30 pages, and you're gonna have to merge them all by dragging and dropping all 12 documents in here. But you can see it's a really easy, straightforward process to do that. Awesome, okay, we have merged our interior files. So we now just have one interior called merged. So what I'm gonna do is say, upload my book file. We're back in create space now upload my book file it's a pdf file it's ready to go and it is called merged so let's go to my downloads there it is merged pdf and i'm gonna upload this now you can choose here this is kind of important whether you want a bleed or not in your book so if you have a design like this one where it really it doesn't matter if it chops a little bit off around the edge I would actually let this bleed just because I want the picture to go right to the edges of the paper. So selecting a bleed means that your whole design is gonna go right to the edges of the paper. If you turn off that bleed, what you're gonna get is a little margin around the outside. You can see that there's a white margin. So you'll remember when we set up the page in Canva, we added that additional quarter of an inch on the width and the height of the page. Now, because we set that up, what we're gonna do is select bleed to end after the edge of the page, because we don't want to leave this white margin around the page because that will just be too much space. We've already set that space, so we're gonna let it bleed as they say. So the next step is that we're gonna run an automated print check as we upload the interior file. So let's leave that selected. So we put our interior file here, we're gonna upload that, we're gonna say run automated print checks, which is gonna warn us if there's any problem. We don't want their $200 professional design service, that's not necessary, we are doing this ourselves. So we're ready to go and say save. And then what CreateSpace does is it runs this automated print check. It says this will just take a few minutes and they will check to see if there are any issues with our file. So it's great, we get our warning as soon as we upload our interior. Okay, so CreateSpace found one issue with our file. So let's take a look and see what the problem is and whether we can sort that out. Okay, so the issue that CreateSpace is giving us is that it, the, the design does not bleed right up to the edge. You can see this dotted line here. This is the edge of the book. This determines the very edge. This dotted line in here is where you should keep all of the important details. So I'm actually a little bit more concerned that the ends of the lines are going over this section. So what I'm going to do is go back into Canva and I'm going to correct this by just dragging these lines just a little bit further that way so they are within this dotted line. So I actually love the Create Space Interior Reviewer for letting me know what is going on with my book so that I can go in there and fix it and correct it.
All right, so we've finished the interior. We are in the home stretch and this is really the fun bit, which is setting up the cover for your book. Now, a lot of people in our curate group have really enjoyed putting together things like composition books because that's all they have to do is create the cover. We've actually created those templates already for them. And we would love to hear it. If there are uh, templates for books that you would like us to put together, we can totally do that. Just add a cover. So let's do this. We're going to select a finish for our book cover first of all. So you have the choice between matte and glossy. Now for this book of isometric paper, I actually went with the matte finish. It feels lovely. It has a kind of a rubbery sort of texture, but it feels really classy and really nice quality. What I would say, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's really picking up fingerprints. That's kind of the problem with this. Similarly, there's Jordan's book and you can see a few fingerprints at the top, but it really feels nice. Now the glossy books, this is a book I did that's glossy and you can see it has more of a shine to it. And really, I would use glossy for most projects, but do test it out for yourselves. I'd recommend when you're starting out with Create Space, order some books, try the covers, try the paper, see what works for you, see what it looks like when you get a big book and you put a lot of pages in, see what happens when you create a small book. I really think it's a good idea to test it and feel some of these books just to see what you prefer and what's going to suit your project best. So for now, I'm going to select glossy and I'm going to go with build your cover online. So I always recommend just build your cover online. There are other options. You can do a professional cover design, but $400? No, we don't need to do that. Or upload a print ready PDF. You could do that, but this way is the easiest. So let's say build your cover online and launch cover creator. Okay, so here we are in the cover creator and what you will see is there are a lot of ready-made covers. Now, I don't recommend using any of these because they really kind of look print-on-demandy, um, sort of self publishing What I usually do is I skip through all the way to this template called the spruce and they all have great names, they're all named after trees. And I'm going to select the spruce and say OK. And this is why I select this particular design. It's because it has a blank space that you can put a complete image for the front cover on it. There's also actually another cover called the palm and the palm lets you upload a picture on both the front and the back. But for this design, I'm just gonna do a front cover. So looking at the front cover image section of Create Space, it actually tells us exactly what we need for the cover. So first of all, we need a JPEG file. We also need it to be 8.75 by 11 and a half inches. So this is actually added a quarter of an inch to the width and half an inch to the height. And now this is the important thing. They're also asking for an image resolution of at least 300 dpi that's dots per inch or dots or pixels per inch so i'm going to go over to canva now and show you how we set up a cover picture that will meet these requirements so let's go back to canva and set up our design that will meet these requirements so i'm going to say create a design and then use custom dimensions and this time we don't want to be in inches. We actually want to switch these units to pixels. And what I'm going to do, so let's double check those requirements. So we have 8.75 by 11 and a half. So let's go back to Canva and I'm just going to use this as a quick calculator. 8.75 and I'm going to multiply this by 300. And what I am doing is making sure that each inch of our cover has 300 dots in it so it meets create spaces requirements so 8.75 times 300 is 2625 so that's now our width in pixels so make sure you're in pixels and do 2625 and now we're going to do the same with the height then the height is going to be 11.5 so let's go back to Canva. 11.5 times 300 is 345 
O. So as long as we set up our cover with these dimensions, it's going to be the right size and it's going to be the right resolution for create space. Now, if you're making a book that's a different size, that's fine. You're just going to go straight back to cover creator, see what size image it's asking for. You're just going to multiply each of these numbers by 300 and add them in as pixels. Very important you set this as pixels. And we're going to say design. Okay, so we've got our blank page and we're all ready to set up our cover. So one thing I really like to do is actually use these little text snippets that Canva gives you. And the reason I like to do this is I find that font pairing makes a big difference in how professional something looks, whether it's a t-shirt, whether it's a book cover, picking two complementary fonts and putting them together makes a world of difference to your design. And you can see Canva have actually already done this for you by picking two complementary fonts and putting them in here. Now actually Google Fonts has a whole section on font pairing and they have tools to help you pair fonts. So if you wanna go deep in this, use Google Fonts. Canva also actually have an article on font pairing. So there's a lot of information out there if you want to learn more about this. But for now, I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna pull this one here. I like this text. It says bare organics right now, but we're gonna call this 365 robots bot a day. Cool, so that's our title. We're gonna put that up there. And then I'm going to find a cute robot to put on the front cover. Let's have a look. That guy's crazy. That's more Halloween than robot, I think. Browse through this, see what we can find. That's pretty cool. Now, with the cover, we are not too worried about color. We can make it full color and it won't cost us anything more. When we were working on the interior, we kept everything black and white, but for the cover, we want full color, awesome design. So let's keep looking through here. I, I like this robot. I wonder if there's any more that are good. That one's kind of cool, I like him. Let's see what else there is here. Oh, and I like this guy. I guess he's a robot. It says robot. That one's paid, so I'm gonna not use that. I don't wanna use any paid images. Okay, I like this guy, he's kind of fun. Oh, we can also change the background. We Let's see what, what looks good. Oh, I like this orange. That looks pretty cool. This guy dancing down here. Okay, we're getting somewhere with this. There we go. I wonder if this looks maybe a little bit too childlike. So we can experiment with canvas elements and do something like this. I like those two. There we go. That's kind of cute. As I say, this is really the fun part of this. And actually, I uploaded this image from Pixabay, which I believe is public domain. It's always best to check with Pixabay, but this actually looks pretty cool. I might take these ones off. Turn this to a white background, I think. Oh, I like that. Maybe gray. That looks pretty neat. Sometimes simplicity really is just the answer. So I think I might just use this guy. And one thing we actually have in Tangent, which works really well, is we have this tool called the Sky Palette. And what you can do with Sky Palette is upload your image. So there we go, I just took a screenshot of it. And this will actually generate colors for you. So if you wanna create your color scheme, we can actually just take this particular, actually let's use the green. We can take this green here, I like this color. And we can actually paste this into Canva right over here. Let's set the background. And we're gonna to go to document colors and we can actually paste the color over there. And boom. So we can actually create this complementary color scheme right there. And what I might do is put a shape. Let's put a white shape behind him. Oh, this, this will work. So we can do this, we'll make this white. Let's put a white there, whoops. Try that again. Okay, and we're gonna move that back a little bit. So he's popping out through the middle of it. 
and I think this is going to look pretty neat as our cover. So I mean there's really all kinds of different ways you can set up your cover. You can use all kinds of artwork. There we go, I really like that. And so we can put a bot a day, let's call it design a bot a day. And we have our cover. So I'm going to download that as a JPEG file. You have to make sure you download it as a JPEG and I'm going to hit download on that and save my design. Great. Okay. So we have uploaded our image there and that all works fine. Looks perfect. I'm going to turn off the author picture because we don't need that. I'm also going to take away the back cover text because I don't want anything there. I do want to make the background, so I'm going to just switch that to a fairly neutral colour, I think. I don't want to do the exact same colour, I think I'm going to do something that sort of complements it. Oh, uh, I don't like that one. Let's, yeah, I think we'll maybe go with that neutral pale blue. It just gives it kind of a finished look, I like that. I think it's going to look really nice when the book is printed. We don't need to worry about the font because we don't have any text on the back. I think that's ready to go. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so there we go. This is the final cover there. So now all I have to click is save, oh actually complete cover and save and we are ready to go. Awesome. So we are in the final rounds of our book now. The next step is complete the setup and there's really not much left to do. So you can see we've finished the interior, we've finished the cover, everything looks good here. We've got the ISBN. All we're gonna do is submit files for review and we are done. Okay, so you wait a few hours and sometimes it might take as much as a day, not often two days. It's usually within a few hours to a day and you'll get an email back from CreateSpace saying, hey, your book is ready to go. Sometimes you may get a warning. If you get a warning, then you just need to read what the problem is and try and fix it. If you can't fix it yourself, ask us. We will usually be around in the treasure hunting group or the curate group and usually someone will be able to answer your questions. So let's assume all is well with your book. It all meets with CreateSpace's standards. Now all you've got left to do, first of all, channels. So I suggest that you allow all the standard distribution options, Amazon.com, Amazon Europe, and the CreateSpace eStore. None of them are gonna cause you any problems setting these up. And also I like to enable the expanded distribution. Oh, we have to set up a BISAC code before we can make this available to bookstores, but we'll do that in just a moment. So what this means is that your book will be available across all of these standard channels and to additional expanded distribution like libraries, universities, create space direct, and eventually bookstores when we set that up. One thing you will notice when you do expanded distribution is that you will get other people on your listing. These are people who are drop shipping your book and they're trying to make a little bit of profit from either the taxes, the shipping, or from selling the book to places that CreateSpace normally wouldn't sell it, like overseas. So don't worry about it. You will see these other people jump on your listing, but the good news is you will still get the sale. So ultimately they'll still come to you. So don't worry about it too much. We're almost done with this. We just want to fix this BISAC thing. So we're going to click select a BISAC code here and we are going to choose the category we want this book to be in. So this is really, I, I don't know, we could call it, you can maybe go with juvenile nonfiction art. Maybe that would work. Oh, in fact, that's perfect. We'll just do juvenile nonfiction art drawing. Perfect. And we're going to select English, that's fine. Country of pub publication is United States. And we can add some keywords. So I'm going to put robots, gift. In fact, let's make that all small. Robots, gift. Now, because it's a 365 book, I'm going to put Christmas in there. I'm going to put journal and I'm going to put robotics. Actually, I don't think I want journal in there. I think I'm going to put activity like an activity book. The keywords, you really should sort of think about what people are likely to be searching for who would love your book and buy it. And those are the keywords you're going to include here. And we can also go back and put in a description. So we can go 
draw a robot every single day and you will have a book full of wacky, quirky robot art. You'd probably want to write a little bit more than that. And also with your description, it's a good idea to include some keywords. So, I mean, we do have robot, draw, art. You might want to put a few more keywords than that into your description. You have to make it readable. You have to make it sort of make sense in English. But do try and sneak in as many keywords as you can because Google will index your listing and Amazon will also have your listing. So this does count for your search results. Now there's one more thing. If this is a children's book, it actually asks you for a reading level. So I don't know. I think I'm going to put maybe fifth grade. We'll go with fifth grade for this. And that's just because we picked the BISAC category juvenile. So I think we've got that all corrected so we're going to do save and continue now perfect okay so we've got one thing we skipped over pricing so we're going to go back and fix that so i'm going to do i think i'd like to do about 12.99 seems a reasonable price so if i say calculate let's see how much money we'll make on a 12.99 book oh that's great so on amazon we would get five dollars 64 royalty for each book sold if it's sold through create space you'll get eight dollars and also it works out the price in the UK and Amazon Europe. So that all looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. So the last option you have in CreateSpace is to publish the book on Kindle. Now, I don't recommend doing this if your book is a prompt book or if it's a coloring book or something where the user has to actually write in it. But if it was like a quotations book, like 365 quotations or meditations, then I would probably put that on Kindle. You really just got to think about whether the user wants to read your book or interact with it. If they want to interact with it, then I probably wouldn't bother putting it on Kindle. Congratulations, you are done. Soon your book will be live on Amazon.com. You'll be able to check it out, show it to your friends and start selling it, start marketing it. Hopefully, if you've got good keywords, a good niche, you'll see some organic traffic and organic sales. If it's a little bit slow to get started, don't worry. You can give this a push with marketing. Use Pinterest, use Instagram, Facebook, share it with everyone you know. Like really put this book out there. Consider old fashioned marketing. Think about maybe putting together a media kit or press kit that you can send to local radio stations or newspapers. Send your book to major influencers. Offer them maybe a giveaway copy that they can give to the people who follow them. You can often find people in your field by looking on YouTube, by looking for blogs. Those are the people you want to help promote your book. Reaching out to other people is probably your biggest weapon in selling your book. Just tell everyone about it. Tell everyone it exists. If you'd like more marketing information, including how to run Facebook adverts or set up a Facebook group, then please either come and talk to me or come and join our Curate course where we go much more in depth with how to sell and market your digital products. If you've enjoyed this class, please, please tell your friends. Also, do make sure you've downloaded a copy of the ebook that goes with this class because all the nitty gritty stuff, all the measurements, all the little sort of tricky bits, we have written down exactly what you need to do in that book. So do download it so you can check it out and know what you are doing with this project. I challenge you to follow through on this, to actually make this book make a book a 365 project and then share your progress come and tell us in the treasure hunting group in the curate group tell us what you're working on tell us how it's going uh, we will love we would absolutely love to help you promote it share it get it out there get the word out there and hopefully you will be our next bestseller good luck